Hey guys, I'm Chef D. Max. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to make chicken and mole. Such a great dish. It's actually going to be simple the way I show it to you because we're going to actually purchase the mole. Uh, you can get it online, you can get it from a grocery store, but it's amazing. So stay with me. Click subscribe if you're not doing that already. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and ring that bell and I'll send you new things I have coming up. So see you back in a second with chicken mole. Okay guys, we're gonna start this chicken mole off, but I'm gonna start with some rice first. So here, I have some just regular jasmine rice that I've soaked in some water, and then I'm just gonna put that in here. Okay, put that in my pot. So I wanna drain it good because I want the measurements to be right. I want them to be, you know, I, I like with jasmine rice, um, one and a half cups of water. So I have one cup of rice there. So I'm going to go with one and a half cups water, okay? Now, some rice like, you know, like Uncle Ben's or maybe like a thicker rice like that, you might go with two cups to one. But with jasmine and basmati, I like to go with, with uh, one and a half. So with that, I'm going to put two tablespoons of butter in there, and I'm going to put a little bit of salt so it has flavor, and I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil too, okay? And... Now what I'm going to do, bring this to a boil. As soon as it comes to a boil, I turn it down to a simmer. And when I turn it down to a simmer, or like low heat. So I go from like high heat, bring it to a boil, down to a low heat, and then I put a cover on it. And I put a timer on for 15 minutes. I let it cook for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, I take it off the heat, turn the heat off. And then I let it sit for another 12 minutes, covered like that. Then I'm just going to flake it up and you'll see what it looks like later. So I'll see you guys back in a second. Hey guys, I'm Chef D. Max. Welcome back to the kitchen. Um, mole is such an amazing flavor. I know we've got our rice on, that's cooking. Um, and so what I'm going to do is first start with some onion. So I have an onion here that I've cut and I want to start uh, kind of sauteing that up. So I'm going to go ahead and slice these down. I don't want to um, dice these. You could dice them if you wanted to, but I'm just going to slice those. I'm going to start my pan here with a little bit of olive oil. And you could just use canola oil if you wanted on this as well. And I'm going to go up in temperature. And um, what I want to do is just caramelize these lightly. So not a lot because there's a lot of flavor in the mole. You really, you don't need to gather that much flavor out of the, the um, onion itself. So you can see it with this. I'm just kind of breaking it up and sticking it in here. Now I want to put a little salt in at this point. I always salt as you go. So I'll salt now, I'll salt in the middle, I'll salt at the end. So then I'm going to put a little pepper. Again, not a lot of extra flavor needs to go into this because of the fact that we have this mole. So I have some beautiful almond mole here. Now, how do you get your mole? You can go online. I'll give you some links below of, of ones that I like. Um, but your grocery store will have a mole, sometimes in a jar or a little bit, sometimes in a can. Obviously, your best quality one is going to be one you grab in a market. This one I got. Actually, when I was visiting Houston, I got, um, I was at the, the kind of Mexican market and they made all fresh moles. So I just grabbed a big bag of that. It's only chilies and dried fruits and um, just all these spices, right? So, and it's got some oil in there too, but it doesn't really need, it doesn't have anything that goes bad. So you can stick it in your fridge and it'll last for a long time. So when you go out of town, look for mole like that in the market. Bring it back with you. Put it in your fridge in a mason jar and then you'll always have it for times like these. So I'll show you how we're going to use that in a second. But the, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our chicken. So I've got like a big, beautiful chicken here. Okay. And what I want to do is I'm going to take the chicken and I'm going to cut off some things like the wings. I'm going to make, I'm making like a soup. So I want to take those chicken wings and use that for the soup. I'm going to use any of the inner parts here. I'm going to take all this excess fat because fat and chicken soup is really good flavor, right? So I'm going to cut here along the edge of the chicken. Now you can feel free to buy just chicken thighs or just chicken breasts, whatever you particularly love, because some of you I know do not like cutting a chicken, but it's super simple, right? Here I have the thigh and the leg, and then here I'm going to cut the, the thigh out like this. I'm going to use the leg later in my um, 
in my other dish, okay? Um, but, I, but you could use the leg as well. So what I do for that, when I flip it over here, is just pop it. So when you pop the bone, bone out of the joint, kind of like if you popped your bone out of a joint when you were playing a sport, right? It just pops out and then it makes it easy to cut around. So you cut like that around it and you're good to go. And then, then what I do is I cut through the, the bone again here um, and I get these beautiful thighs. So I'm gonna use my thighs, okay? I don't need the back of the chicken. So I'm just gonna cut that out. I'm gonna put that on the side too and I'm gonna use that for my uh, stock, okay? But I'm gonna cut my, my chicken breast right down the center here, okay? And I'm gonna cut it like this, okay? Now what I wanna do is I wanna saute these up nicely. I'm gonna try my thighs first. So what I'll do is I'll move my onions to the side and I'm gonna put my thighs right here in the center. Thighs take a little bit longer to cook, so I like to use those like that. Now, my chicken breast, I'll probably just cut this in two pieces. I'll cut it like in half like this, in half like this. I'll cut a little of the excess skin off. Even though I like to saute it with the skin and it gets good flavor that way, right? So here I'm going back again, cutting down along the breastbone, right? And what I end up with is nice chicken breast that's boneless and ready to go into my dish. Now, again, cutting it in half. So I've got four pieces of chicken breast and two thighs, okay? And then the rest of this I'm gonna use for my soup. So never throw that away, ever. That should be used for soup always, okay? So with this now, these onions are cooking nicely here. I'm gonna go ahead and Scrape my pan a little bit because you don't want any of the brown in there to turn black, right? That's no good, right? And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of the uh, onions on top like this. And then I'm going to put these breasts here to saute. Now there's a lot of skin here. So the skin's got a little fat in that, which is good. We want that fat to come out, right? Here like this. And I'm going to put the last one in the center. Now, I want these to cook, okay? I'm going to just kind of spell the onions on the top like this. And I want these chickens uh, to sear really nice. I'm going to sear them on both sides really good. And we're going to deglaze this in a second um, with a little bit of um, uh, water, chicken stock. And then we're going to add our mole. So stay with me. Probably take about three or four minutes for these to kind of caramelize up a little bit. Be right back. Okay, we're back now and you can see like my chicken is going to be kind of starting to uh, starting to sear, right? We've got the center part here searing. The skin is um, getting crispy in there. Now, I don't really care if the skin stays on to be honest with you because because, you know, after it sits in a sauce like this, the skin gets you know, it can be a little bit soggy after, you know, because it's, it's crispy. Like, obviously, when you eat fried chicken, right, what happens? The skin gets really crispy, right? But as soon as you add water to that, it becomes soggy. So soggy skin is not something that you really like. So with this, once I turn it like this, I'm going to take a little water here, and I'm going to deglaze this pan with water, okay, like this. Now... You can see how much water is in there, right? This is gonna be like braising the chicken with the onions in there, right? And um, the this, this skin, this, like I said, the skin, just leave the skin in, right? And then you can take the skin out and you can eat it if you like it at that stage. But if you don't, you can just take it out at that point and leave it out. Now, at this point is when I add in my mole. So my mole, you can see here, is like, you know, it's like a paste, right? It's got some oil left in it. This one's really old too. This one's probably six months old. It's my last one I have. So um, what I want to do, I want to use it all up in this, but it's going to get dry a little, like the oil was on the top of it, right? But you can see how it's kind of a little dry because the spices kind of start to, some of their oil starts to evaporate. I don't know how it gets out, but, and it doesn't get out that much because it's in there for a long time. Um, 
but what we're looking to do now is rehydrate it. So what I'm doing is putting it in this water like this, stirring it around like this, and trying to break up those chunks, any chunks of the spices and uh, things that are in there. Normally with this as an almond mole, it's going to have a lot of crushed almond in it. Um, different chilies, a lot of different wajio, uh, a, you know, kind of chipotle chilies. It's not as spicy a one. You can get all different types. You can get ones that are super spicy. You can get ones that are, you know, more mild. Um, so depending on what kind you like, when you go in to the store, you can look for that. Now, if you just buy a generic one from your grocery store, it's going to be kind of a, you know, a generic mole. It's going to have all the mole flavors, which is, has also chocolate in there too, which it gives it a nice flavor, right? A little sweetness. Even though it's really not sweet chocolate, it's, di it's different. So one of the things you could do is click up here, and I have a chicken stock recipe. So when, like I take that chicken, I'll roast that, make a beautiful stock, and then um, after I make that stock, I'll make these chicken ice cubes. And you can, if you go click on that, I'll show you all about that, how to do it. So what you end up with is this, which is basically a chicken ice cube, right? That I put in a long ice cube. Now, this is basically reduced chicken stock. So this makes about a quart of actual sauce. So I reduce, reduce a quart of chicken stock down to this. So when I add it back to my liquid, what I want to do is add water in, which I've done right? And that'll give me a quart of chicken stock. So it's like if you just poured some chicken stock in there. So if you don't have chicken stock, um, you want to buy it, you can buy it. That's fine. Buy the chicken stock and then um, use it from there. Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and cover it. And I'm going to let that stew for about, about eight to 10 minutes to cook my chicken. And at that point, we're going to finish this up. So stay with me. Okay, you guys, it's been about four or five minutes now. And what I want to look for is I want to touch my chicken. You see how it bounces back. Okay. And it's like soft. Well, that means that it's not done yet. Okay. It means it's still when it, when you touch it and it's firm, that means it's cooked in the center. So you want to also remember carryover time. It's going to carry over because it's hot right before you eat it. So I always say like on your hand here, when you push your thumb against your index finger really hard, you feel that that's firm and that's where you want the meat to be. Um, you want to catch it right before it gets to that fully firm and then it'll be that way it'll stay um, just cooked right by the time you eat it. Okay. Cause it, we are going to let it cool down a little bit. Now it won't carry over a ton. So you can't let it, you can't let it be raw, but these are still a little, I can tell by touching them, they're still a little medium rare in the center. So with this now, I want to stick a, a, a a quarter stick or it's actually a half stick of butter in there so the butter is just going to enrich in this okay so I want to let that that melt like that and I'm just gonna like kind of put this on all this on top of the chicken like this you see that your goal is just to keep this chicken nice and moist and what are you doing with the liquid you're allowing the liquid to reduce down and thicken up okay Nothing on the bottom should be sticking. You should always feel on the bottom. Make sure nothing's sticking. If you had a piece of skin that got stuck or to the bottom, right? Make sure you loosen it up and stir it around. Okay, we want this, this nice buttery uh, chipotle. It's going to be fantastic with a beautiful chicken stock in there. So all you're really doing with your mole is adding water, chicken stock, um, and butter. And if you really didn't want to use chicken stock, you don't have to. Um, Nowadays, you guys can buy it at the store if you want to, if you don't want to make your own. I always say follow that recipe and make those ice cubes. I make a huge batch. So I'll take like that chicken bone there, wrap those in plastic, or put them in a Ziploc bag, throw them in my freezer. When I get like five or six of those, I'll make one big pot of chicken stock and I'll cook that whole thing. So I'm taking like one afternoon. It's not even full attention. It's just, it's there. You know what I mean? So um, if you do that, then you can make a ton of ice cubes um, of chicken stock. And then you're not always, because you reduce that down. So you would take like two gallons of chicken stock and reduce that down to like one quart. And that one quart you'll put in and you make your chicken, reduced chicken sauce. And, and that you can put in stuff like this. Um, if you're making a chicken soup and you wanted to add one of those and a quart of water, you could do that as well. So we're getting really close. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit because it's just, it's almost done. They're starting to firm up. Okay. So now... I have some rice here. Remember that rice that we did, right? 
Okay, I turn I turn it off after um, after 15 minutes and let it sit for another uh, 10 to 12 minutes covered, and then that's it. And you can see it's cooked perfectly, right? So let's take a piece of this chicken. I'll just take a small piece right now, and I'll put it right here. Let's try a little onion with it as well. So onions are going to be really nice with it. Like I said, you don't have to um, use the uh, you don't have to use the um, the stock itself. I mean, uh, um, you don't have to use the skin itself. You can remove that. So with this, I'm just going to break that chicken. You can, and this is like really super tender. Mmm. The fresh onion flavor with all of those intense spices from the mole. They're fantastic. With a beautiful white rice. Mmm. You could serve this with sli sliced avocado or do a salad of avocado and tomatoes. It would be really nice. If you wanted to put vegetables in this, you could. You could put roasted cauliflower, broccoli. Anything goes with this. It's really this chicken, this, that chicken just like bathing in this mole is... Mm, it's incredible flavor. The better the mole you have, the better the chicken is going to turn out. So look for a good mole in your markets. Maybe go to your, go to one of your Latin markets uh, in your area, and and try that out because I think that's going to make a big difference for you. But even the jar moles that you find in the grocery store, they are surprisingly very good. So one of these days we'll do mole. But I know you're <laughs> so many people are like so many ingredients, and it takes so long to do it um, that it's really just one of those things. Uh, buying it is sometimes a lot easier and something that you're going to do. But maybe in the future, if you guys request it, I'll have to do a mole for you from scratch and I'll show you how it's done. But enjoy this for now because this is a quick and simple dinner. This is going to take you, you know, 15 minutes to cook this at home um, and your family's going to love it. And they're going to be like, wow, where did you get those flavors, mom and dad? But uh, have a good time with it. I'll see you back in the kitchen soon. I'm Chef Dean Max.